Dress Rosa holds a special place in my arc nostalgia for many, many reasons, but one of the more poignant would be that this is where Luffy revealed his new form, one which really struck a chord with me, being Gear Forth Subscribe Man, which allowed Luffy to punch enemies with the same vigorous force as you hitting the subscribe button for the Grand Line review, granting you regular One Piece content uploaded straight into your YouTube feeds. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and more specifically, Sagas in Minutes, the series that aims to equip you with the basic knowledge to leap into the wilderness of One Piece, and today, it is time to finally conclude the mighty endeavor that is the Dress Rosa Saga. The Dress Rosa Saga, as stated multiple times now, is the eighth in the series consisting of two arcs, but an absolutely mega 148 chapters, which contains a ridiculously jam-packed story with a massive cast of characters that we will be attempting to wrap up here today. And last time, we ended with the defeat of Sugar an officer of the Don Quixote Pirates, whose dismissal resulted in everyone who had been turned into a toy, regaining their original forms and focusing their rage on one man, the current king of the island, Don Quixote Doflamingo. And the first shot in this endeavor would be taken by Kuros, our former toy soldier, who upon regaining his human body, leapt into action and decapitated Doflamingo, thus ending the entire saga. And actually, no, it turned out to be a string clone because that's just a thing that Doflamingo can do with his devil fruit, which is insane. First of many, many insane things actually, because sensing this unprecedented Accidented danger to his position, Doflamingo chose to activate a technique known as the Birdcage, whereby he entrapped the entire island in a cage of razor sharp strings, which would slowly encroach on the land, threatening to kill everyone caught within it. And with that, we are now on a clock to defeat the Warlord of the Sea. But that would be further complicated by the fact that Doflamingo decided to broadcast a bounty system in order to hinder the uprising on Dressrosa, assigning various figures a star rating, with each star being worth 100 million berries to anyone who was able to capture the individual in question. So with this in mind, both Luffy and Law who was now freed from the grasp of Doflamingo were worth three stars each. But rather surprisingly, the most valuable figure would turn out to be God Usopp, whom Doflamingo assumed a mighty five stars due to him being the reason why all of the toys reverted. So this hinders effort somewhat as the full force of the Don Quixote pirates, as well as many civilians of Dressrosa and some miscellaneous bounty hunters now set their sights on the prize in front of them. Oh, and I should also say that he offered a three star rating to Sabo, who after competing in the finals of the Corridor Coliseum was successfully able to acquire the Mera Mera Nomi. But in addition, to this, it is also revealed that Sabo is a high ranking member of the Revolutionary Army and is here to investigate Doflamingo's black market practices. And shortly after, Sabo would come into conflict with Admiral Fujitora, which prevented the Marine from hunting down Luffy and Law. And with his new abilities, Sabo was also able to fight Fujitora into an effective stalemate, at which point Fujitora had a change of heart and decided to bet on Doflamingo being taken down by Luffy, then turning his attention to saving as many civilians as possible from the indiscriminate wrath of Doflamingo. Now, during this time, we take the opportunity to zero in on one Trafalgar Law, the man responsible for bringing Luffy and the Straw Hats into this situation under the guise of defeating one of the four emperors. In reality, that was but a clever ruse and Law's plan never extended this far. And in fact, this whole endeavor was crafted in order to use Luffy to help Law exact personal revenge against Doflamingo, because as it turns out, he and Law, well, they have quite a history. As a child, Law, after a horrific childhood in which he was stricken with Amber Lead Syndrome, as well as a genocide conducted upon his homeland, would end up finding his way to a younger incarnation of the Don Quixote Pirates, and specifically developing a relationship with Doflamingo's brother, Rosinante. And we also go another layer deep into this flashback, briefly focusing on Doflamingo and how he was once a world noble until his father took his family to live with the masses, which was a predictably tragic move. And one day a child Doflamingo felt so bitter that he murdered his own father. Now his brother, Rosinante would take a different path by becoming an agent of the Marines and then going on to infiltrate the Don Quixote pirates on their behalf. But everything would change one day when Rosinante overheard Law's real name, which was Trafalgar D. Water Law and knowing that there would be no mercy whatsoever if Doflamingo were to discover this name, Rosinante fled the crew with Law in hand and traveled far and wide to find a doctor who could cure Law's affliction. All to no avail though, until an opportunity to source a certain devil fruit came up, being the Ope Ope no Mi. Now Doflamingo was on the hunt for this fruit because it was fabled to allow its user to make others somewhat immortal, or not immortal, but more accurately, perpetually youthful, which was something that very much interested Mr. Flamingo. And in a series of more tragic events, Rosinante's identity as a Marine would be uncovered and Doflamingo would go on to murder him with the exact same gun that he had used on their father. However, this was not before Rosinante acquired the Ope Ope Nimi and fed it to Law, which allowed him to cure his Amber Lead Syndrome and grow up into the figure that he is today, hell bent on destroying Doflamingo for what he did to Rosinante. So back to the modern day now and the current developments are not going in Doflamingo's favor as his crew were being systematically dismantled by the small army marching upon him. Several key Coliseum fighters were able to take down prominent officers and Straw Hat member Frankie rounded this out by defeating Senor Pink in what can 
can only be described as a true battle between manly men things. At this point, this left only Doflamingo and his top officers remaining, the first of which to go down would be Diamante, who was defeated by Kuros in an act of retribution as Diamante was responsible for murdering Kuros's wife and Rebecca's mother, Scarlet. Also, Scarlet was the daughter of former King Riku, thus making Rebecca royalty of the Riku dynasty. Next up, Pika would be dismantled, quite literally, by the efforts of Straw Hat Swordsman Zoro, who chopped and chopped and chopped until Pika was forced to face off against Zoro directly, which definitely did not work in his favor at all. And finally, Treble would come to kind of defeat himself, actually, after a poorly thought out explosion technique designed to kill Law, but it pretty much just ended up knocking Treble out himself. During this time, we also had a brief rematch of Luffy versus Bellamy, which ended in just as one-sided a result as it did the first time around, except this time it was much more heartfelt because Bellamy had resigned himself to having pledged his loyalty to Doflamingo, but was also more than happy to be brought down by the only other man in the world that he respected, being Luffy. Now, despite putting up a grand effort against Doflamingo, including severely damaging his internal organs, Trafalgar Law, still fairly gravely injured himself, mind you, would be taken out of action, leaving only two combatants on this dramatic stage, being Luffy and Doflamingo. Now, that isn't to say that everyone else was just standing about doing nothing, because after repelling Senor Pink, Frankie and the Tontata forces finally reached the Smile Factory, where they freed the enslaved tribe, including Princess Mansherry. In the ensuing chaos, Kinemon also very notably found the samurai he was hunting for on the island being Kanjuro, another nice piece in the samurai mystery puzzle that would not be answered in the saga. However, both Kinemon and Kanjuro would go on to contribute to the defense of Dressrosa by attempting to stop the birdcage from encroaching further alongside Zoro. And this effort would be joined from all sides by various factions, one of which would be the Colosseum fighters who all pushed back against the birdcage thanks to a large barrier created by Bartolomeo. And Frankie and his faction were also able to use the Seastone Smile Factory as a barrier for them to attempt to stop the birdcage. And finally, Marine Admiral Fujitora would even join this effort with the combination of everyone managing to halt the cage very briefly, but very importantly. Cutting back to the main action, Luffy would now reveal a new form to take on Doflamingo, being Gear Fourth Bound Man, a transformation that outclassed Doflamingo in both speed and power, although it was unable to deliver the final blow before Luffy ran out of time and was forced to accept the assistance of the civilians of Dressrosa to buy him enough time to regain his use of Haki to use the form once more. In addition to this, Sabo also hopped into action once more in order to prevent Jesus Burgess of the Blackbeard Pirates from killing Luffy, a fight that Sabo would go on to convincingly win. But here we are now, cutting it very, very close to everyone's demise at this point. However, Luffy, thanks to the efforts of almost literally everyone on the island, was given just enough time to invoke Gear Forth once more and finally defeat Doflamingo with an incredible King Kong gun, shattering both the glasses and the global standing of the Warlord, dispelling the birdcage and saving the entire kingdom. Following this, Admiral Fujitora would issue a formal apology to King Riku, who was reinstated as the monarch of the nation, along with Viola and Rebecca regaining their place as royalty. And at this time, Sabo's investigation on behalf of the Revolutionary Army would conclude, and after making a Vivia card for Luffy, he left along with his forces. Now, elsewhere in the world, big, big things were happening, specifically in regards to the other alliance comprised of worst generation members, who had found themselves all of a sudden under attack by a profound world figure. This man, nay, this creature, had found their base by jumping off a sky island and landing 10,000 meters onto the hard ground. And after emerging with nothing but a light headache, he was introduced as 100 Beast Kaido, one of the four emperors and a being known as the strongest creature alive, which sent our very unfortunate worst generation members into a slight panic to say the least. Now also by this time, the Sanji led faction of the Straw Hats had made it safely to Zo, although Zo itself was proving to be less than safe with a contingent of the Beast Pirates, Kaido's crew, there allegedly searching for a certain samurai. There's that word again, samurai. The search was not not going well though, as they went on to be dispatched by Sanji and Brook. Back to dress Rosa now, and Luffy and the crew would be forced to flee soon enough, although when doing so, he was faced with a rather large blockade in the form of Fujitora, whom Luffy engaged in combat with, only to be interrupted by the citizens of dress Rosa, who under the guise of shouting angrily at Luffy, actually strategically positioned themselves on the battlefield, preventing Fujitora from invoking his gravity powers. And Fujitora then had no choice but to acquiesce, developing quite a liking for Luffy, and even regretting the fact that he had blinded himself, as he now had a profound desire to look at Luffy with his own eyes. Now, usually the escape from the island is where things might end, but no, because something very, very fascinating had occurred during Luffy's recovery period, which was that a force of individuals had banded together and pledged their loyalty to Luffy, proposing to become his underlings. And these individuals included Cavendish, captain of the beautiful pirates, who after being saved from his toy fate by Usopp, no longer held any ill will towards Luffy, as well as Bartolomeo, our resident fanboy and captain of the Bartow Club. In addition to them though, there was Sai, commander of the Harpo Navy, Ideo, who led the newly formed Ideo pirates, the Tontata pirates helmed by Leo, a giant that Luffy had actually defeated in the Corridor Coliseum named Haradin, who himself was in charge of a small cohort of giants, and finally Orlumbus, who was in command of the Yont Maria Grand Fleet, which 
which brought it a crew totaling roughly 4,300 members. And all of these figures had come to decide amongst themselves that they would follow Luffy. To which Luffy swiftly rejected this idea in the name of freedom and well, just not wanting to do it, which only endeared him further to this band who went on to form their own association anyway, which is now known as the Straw Hat Grand Fleet. Furthermore, even Bellamy became something of an ally because while he didn't join the Grand Fleet, he did take a piece of Luffy's Vivia card and would go on to retire from piracy instead becoming an apprentice dyer and using his newly acquired skills to create a Jolly Roger, assumedly for the Grand Fleet. And with that matter settled, the Grand Fleet went their separate ways, with Luffy and the Straw Hats coming aboard Bartolome's ship, the going Luffy Senpai, in order for them to journey to the island of Zoro to meet up with the other half of their crew, who were currently facing all sorts of issues. But that is a story for the next saga. Next time on Sagas in Minutes, we are hopping into scarily modern day events because we are now done dealing with our seemingly minor enemies like Warlords of the Sea, as the crew are now setting their sights on the four emperors as we embark into the Yonko Saga. But what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please do check out some of my other content or even subscribe to the channel for more glorious One Piece business uploaded straight into your YouTube feeds. But for now, this has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.